Welcome back to Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris with me, Sharad Kutan. And joining us on the show, we have um, we have Fitra, Nuro Fitra, as well as uh, Ili Nadia. So they're both the co-founders of Klima Action Malaysia, or better known as Kami. Now, I want to talk to you guys about what the media can do. Because you know, coming from uh, media practitioners, journalists like ourselves, um, I'm looking at the reporting of you know climate change, climate activism, and you know as you mentioned, the the need to have this urgency when it comes to reporting on these issues. Are there gaps in the way you see reporting of environmental issues within the local media? Um, what about you, Fitra? What do you think? Um, as we said before, like a lot of uh, materials that we have currently, it is like in English. You do not see a lot of media reporting in Bahasa Mal Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So I think like if we could uh, shorten the gap, like uh, merge the gap, then it probably could help like people uh, in the kampong or like the rural area to understand what is climate crisis. And I think like it is very important to know that like. Uh, people like the fishermen or also the farmers, they are already uh, encountering all this aspect of climate crisis, just that they do not know the term climate crisis, that they have been uh, into the sea and into the forest and they have been seeing like a lot of changes happening like from before this until now, mm. you know, like just that uh, getting them to uh, familiar with this terminology would actually help uh, them to understand the issues better and they could right tell yeah. the stories from their perspective and the media could actually get uh, the stories of these people on the ground that has been working like close with the environment mm. to actually understand. I have to say though, I mean, I'm hearing you talk and you're referring to it as a climate crisis, which is wonderful because you're using the right terminology. Semantics are important. Mm. I, I, I see, you know, many media uh, news reporters like myself, for instance, we're still using climate change. Or global without, warming. Yes, or global warming, yeah. correct. You know, without giving the real sense of the urgency of this crisis. So maybe we should all start referring to it as climate crisis because then it gives it a real sense of urgency. Okay, now we've had this particular moment right the haze kind of brought back to a lot of Malaysians that we are connected to the land mm -hmm. and in this case in fact land's not necessarily part of Malaysia mm -hmm. but Sumatra and what happens in Sumatra has a detrimental or immediate effect on us but do you think now that the haze is clear <laughs> <and> blue skies <laughs> have come back that people will forget again and until and unless something dramatic happens mm -hmm. Malaysians are going to kind of ignore the story of mm -hmm. uh, climate crisis just because it's not in their face. I mean, what's your sense of how people respond to the mm -hmm. stories that you think are important? Mm -hmm. I think um, people have been really optimistic by the idea of uh, youth coming out and mm. standing up for the environment. I don't think this will go down easily as uh, you know as previously. I think this generation is making a lot of noise about this issue. I'm very optimistic. I think the people will not forget about it. Uh, besides, the, the sky in Malaysia is getting bluer, but what about in Riau, what about in Sumatra, it's getting redder and redder. I think um, the, the, the emergence of uh, stories are from the social media you know, plays a really important role as well. People can see that, hey, this is not only about Malaysia, this is about the world, this is about Southeast Asia. People will stand up, right. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Well, you know, you mentioned uh, young people, the voices are getting louder. I mean, th really the, the poster child, if I may, of, of climate, the climate crisis has been Greta Thunberg. Mm -hmm. um, but there's been so much backlash coming up from her address at the UN. What did you guys uh, make of that? I mean, what were some of the, I guess, um, how, what did you make of the conversations coming out of, uh, of her address? Mm -hmm. I think among the things that people asked would be, um, you just know how to shout and asking people to do something but you don't have any solution mm -hmm. to it. I think that is a very dangerous uh, mentality when you can only say something or like put pressure on something only if you have the solution. It is totally wrong because that it shouldn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And like um, as youth, um, I think like our role is to be check and balance to the government. Yeah, we mm -hmm. should be able to say what we think is right and what is wrong and uh, the government should listen to us and not it is not the job of the civil society to provide solution we are paying our politicians and they should provide the solution if not then you should just pay me um, yeah. well they're working for us you right? pay, <laughs> pay you a bad salary i do want to say in the, in the remaining minutes that we have i mean some of the simple solutions that exodus put out 
I like growing more trees. The fact of preserving the forest that we have, and you, I think in your slogans also, plantations are not real forests. Remember there was that slogan, we green the world. I mean, these are plantation companies saying they're greening the world. Mm. And we know that plantations are not forests and they don't do the same things for the planet. But there are some sim simple solutions, aren't there, aren't there, Nadia? Simple solutions to help uh, regenerate the earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's, what's your sense of the practical things that we could do? I think um, the practical things that we can do is, for example, first of all, um, we need to know what are the, the, the effects of our lifestyle, you know, um, where our food is coming from. Um, it, there has been like this lack of uh, reporting, lack of information coming from the Malaysian side about, you know, how our forests are being degraded every day, you know, uh, for to produce food for us, mm. you know, simply because of that. Yeah, I think one of the major, um, you know, information that we have to put forward is uh, to connect uh, Malaysians back to where, you know, where food comes from, you know, where this production goes through and things like that. Yes. All right, so get educated and get informed, right? Yes. Equip yourself with that knowledge. Okay, that's all the time we have on the show today. Uh, thank you so much for being on Consider This. It's been a pleasure speaking with you both. I'm Melissa Idris with me, Sherrod Kutten. We will both be back with you same time on Monday. We'll catch you then. Have a great evening. Thank you, guys.